Frontier Nation knows no boundaries. Some wash ashore. Others make their way by any means possible. The favorite sons of Tennessee march down Peyton's Pass. One hundred and eight thousand strong pour into Neyland Stadium. We gain intensity grows. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Finn, go. Right there, right there. There you go. Eyes up, eyes up, eyes up, eyes up. Learn as the game goes on. Watch it. It's 24th ranked Southern Mississippi taking on the 12th ranked Tennessee Volunteers. Everybody, Ron Franklin, welcome to our first Saturday primetime telecast of the year here on ESPN. We got a lot to talk about tonight. First of all, on the Tennessee side of the ledger, it's been a long time since the Balls have had this kind of uncertainty at quarterback. We might tonight, in fact, see three different signal callers. But as far as running back, Travis Henry and Travis Stevens should soon make the Vol faithful forget the fact that Jamal Lewis took off and went to the National Football League. And what about Southern Mississippi? You can bank on one thing: those young youngsters from Hattiesburg will not walk in here and be intimidated by the 108,000 plus fans. They went into Lincoln, Nebraska last year and almost pulled the upset against the Corn Huskers. They have a defense that is called organized confusion. How confusing are they? Well, the Corn Huskers managed only one offensive touchdown against them last year. When we return, Mike Godfrey and Adrian Carston will be here and we'll talk more about tonight's opening game between Tennessee and Southern Mississippi. Tennessee Volunteers. They might very well be a team of destiny. They've stood up to every challenge, and so it is done. <laughs> Fifth choice in the NFL Draft 2000. Running back, defensive end, linebacker, offensive tackle, defensive back. Less familiar names litter the Tennessee lineup. A rebuilding year or just another page added to the Vols' recent storied past? traditions at all of college football it's a fun thing to see as they run the tee here at Neyland Stadium tonight the Golden Eagles number 24 in America in town to help Tennessee kick off their season the Volunteers number 12 in America well as far as the quarterbacks first there was Manning then it was Martin and now another quarterback his last name starts with a name, and it's Joey Matthews from Sevierville, Tennessee, just right down the road from Knoxville. It has been much, much discussed over recent weeks, and uh, tonight we may see a lot of quarterbacks for the Tennessee Volunteers. But Mike Godfrey, the interesting thing to me, or the most intriguing thing, is Eric Locke is listed as number three. He's a wide receiver. Will we see him tonight? We will, Ron. Joey Matthews is a very capable quarterback, but this entire crowd is going to erupt when number two comes in as quarterback because he makes things happen, and he he wants to put points on the board. He's a wide receiver, but they'll build a plan around him. Well, Jeff Kelly is the starter for Southern Mississippi. He's a veteran and a very smart performer. But make no mistake, it's the defense that gives them a chance to win here tonight. Yeah, if you're going to pull an upset, you need to be packing a defense. And Southern Miss does have a defense. It's led by defensive line. They've got, they're very good in the defensive line. Cedric Scott is the one you want to watch. Secondary is very good. They're solid. Difference in this football game tonight just could come down to special teams and David Leverton absolutely outstanding the punter for the Tennessee Volunteers. Jeff Bauer the head coach 10th season at Southern Mississippi. And across the way he celebrated his 50th birthday yesterday. But look at the winning percentage on Philip Fulmer almost 85 percent. Raymond Walls is the deep man for Southern Mississippi and it's Leverton who handles the punting and also does the kickoff. They are standing and cheering here at Neyland Stadium with the new addition we were told we could have upwards of one hundred and nine thousand for this contest tonight and their 2000 season is underway. Leverton's kick, line drive, and out of bounds on the near sideline. <laughs> so 
So Jeff Bauer's team will scrimmage from the 35 yard line. And let's check in on the sidelines. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Ron, thank you very much. As the volunteer defense takes the field, you need to know that Eric Westmoreland, the linebacker, is the only man left from the 1998 national championship team who started on that national championship team. When the coaches in the box pick up the phone, that's the man they need to have communication with. He needs to have communication with his defensive line, his linebacker, his defensive back, and he is the only man who can do that. He's going to have an outcome in this game. Option play. And Kelly is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage by Anthony Sessions and knocked down for a big loss. Offensively for Southern Mississippi, Kelly the veteran. One back, Derek Nixon. He's all everything. We'll even see him at wide receiver tonight. Speaking of receivers, Danny Fowler, Sean Mills, Leroy Handy. Bobby Garner at tight end. He was a quarterback until a couple of weeks ago. And Buck Machado was at tight end. They had moved him inside to guard. Here comes a blitz. They give it to Nick. Hit in the backfield. Knocked down by Overstreet. Kendrick is also there. And some help from Westmoreland. And the swarming Tennessee defense off to an awfully good start. Speaking of that defense, Lloyd, Hickerson, Kendrick, and Will Overstreet. The linebackers, and boy, they're undersized, but they are very, very quick. Westmoreland, Stevenson, and Anthony Sessions. And in the secondary, they have moved the corner lot into safety. He'll work with Marsh at the safeties. Miles and Gaines are the corners. Third down. They need to take it all the way to the 45-yard line. Kelly going to run it. Scrambles at the 30 and is going to be hit from behind and stopped at the 35-yard line. Speed of the Tennessee defense is every bit what we thought it'd be. Jeff Bauer, when we talked to him this week, he was worried about punt protection. Let's see if Tennessee speed can take advantage of that. Mark Hallman comes in to kick. He's a sophomore out of Vicksburg. Eric Parker is the deep man for Tennessee. He's retreated to the 24. And Jeff Bauer told us this morning, not a major concern, but the young man hasn't done it yet. So he's anxious to see Hallman under the gun this evening. Gets the snap. Line drive kick. Good returnable kick for Tennessee. Comes back to the short side of the field. Gets by one tackle. A flag goes down, and he is harnessed at the 35-yard line. A push in the back. I think on Tennessee is going to be called. 43 yards in the punt and 12 on the return. Steve Shaw, a referee tonight. During the return, illegal block in the back on the return team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down. Steve, of course, and the entire crew from the Southeastern Conference. Here are the starters first on offense. Matthews, the veteran Travis Henry. It's finally Henry time here in Tennessee. Bartholomew is the fullback. Fenderson, the tight end. Martin and Wilson, a host of speedy wide receivers. Cedric is the go-to guy. And up front, Herrera. First start for him. And Munoz. The high school All-American, this time last year in Mason, Ohio, gets the start at that right tackle position. His dad, Anthony, who's an NFL Hall of Famer, in attendance for this one this evening. Short drop by Matthews. Gets the pass out. Has it complete at the 31-yard line. And it is Eric Parker on the receiving end. And after we check the defense, Mike, I want you to talk about scripting. Cedric Scott, as Mike said, you got to keep an eye on him. Derek Scott on the other side, tough to handle. The linebackers, good crew. McGee, Davis, and Zade Houston. And in the secondary, and they're going to get tested tonight. These wide receivers can really run. Raymond Walls and Keon Moore. They're both good cover guys, but they'll face as good as they'll see all year this evening. On the I formation, Travis Henry almost lost the ball. Has five, has ten, has 14 yards. Ron, both these teams will script. Offensively, I look for Joy Matthews to throw a lot of short passes here early to get his confidence up. Quick screens, quick throws where he can't get sacked, and then give the ball to Travis Henry. On the other side of the ball, uh, Dave Womack is looking for something defensively in movement to give Tennessee some problems. So the balls are off to a good start, both defensively and now offensively, as they move the chains for the first time this evening. Play action again. Matthews says he's hit. Ball is intercepted, and that is Leo Barnes, and 
he's got open field at the 20. He's going to be caught and knocked out of bounds. Bartholomew, the fullback, saved the touchdown following a 33-yard return. And, Ron, one of the things that you want to do if you're going to pull an upset is stay close early, have good things happen early. Now the offense of Southern Miss has to get this ball in the end zone. But Leo Barnes is going to drop your... He dropped right in front of the out. Ball shouldn't have been thrown. Cedric Wilson was the intended receiver. Leo Barnes with the interception. Mike also, it looked as though a blocker bumped into Matthews just as he right threw the tackle, ball. I believe. So Southern Mississippi with an excellent opportunity following the 33-yard interception return has it first and 10 at the 21. And a flag was thrown, and I think we're going to have a motion penalty against Southern Mississippi. They are moving right into the teeth of the student section in the band. Whether they could not hear signals. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Anyway, false start is called. They still have great field position, but uh, Jeff can't be real happy about a five yard penalty after you've returned it no, to the opponent. No, because 21. this defense doesn't allow you a lot of big plays. Three wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. One setback, and that's Derek Nix. Kelly Set steps up in the pocket, gonna have to run again, flushed out, and it's gonna be hit. Oh, what a head high tackle by Dominique Stevenson. Ron, let's go back to the interception and take a look at this. It may have been the running back that fell into Joy Matthews. Pressure from the outside. And we talked about this defensive line. This defensive line's good. No, even Travis. Well, Travis Henry did back up in protection and caused Joy Matthews not to get any zip on that football. Second down, line to make is the Tennessee 11. They go straight ahead with Nix, and he will fight hard maybe to make it to the 20-yard line, and now it's going to be third down. Ron, the biggest mismatch in this football game is the Tennessee defensive line against the offensive line of Southern Miss, and you've already seen Jeff Kelly run for his life. Twice, uh, yeah. Because he's not going to get a lot of big protection plays, so he needs to move around a little bit. They need to get him in the shotgun. I guess the point that you're making also is that Tennessee, without using the linebackers, they're getting pressure with the down four, yeah, which means they can cover and still get pressure. Southern Miss wants timeout from the sideline. They finally got an official to see it. They're going to take a timeout. So we'll take a break. No score in the ball game. 10:39 left to play in his opening quarter, but it is Southern Mississippi with a chance. Right back. Welcome back to Knoxville. Mike, here are some numbers that'll get your attention if you're Southern Mississippi. Tennessee defense in five plays, one knockdown, one sack, three hurries. Yeah, again, they're dominating the offensive line of Southern Mississippi. Jeff Kelly just needs a little time. And Jeff is, is an extremely bright young man in the classroom. He graduated in three years, but he also is a very bright man on the field of play. And you look at his numbers, but tonight, he has not had a fair advantage no. at all, or even a fair chance, maybe we should say. Woods, the lone setback. Kelly's going to have to run again. Tucks it, and he'll take it to the 19-yard line. But, that, but that's, again, Ron, you talked about his smarts, football smarts. He knows he wants to get at least three on that yeah. turnover, so he does, doesn't want to force the ball. He set the field goal up just right. So that means Brent Hanna will come on for Southern Mississippi an attempt of 36 yards. Last year was 8 of 18, his longest 48 yards against Memphis. And 36 yards out from that left hash mark, and he's got it. So Southern Mississippi takes advantage of an interception off Matthews. They return at 33 yards. Then this volunteer defense closed the door. And we'll take a break. 10.02 left to play in the opening quarter. And it's the Golden Eagles, 3 to nothing. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten coming to you from a jam-packed Neyland Stadium. And to consider that this place now holds right at 109,000, it's still, you could put another 30 in here probably. So many people want to come to see this team play. Hannah to kick it off. Scott is the deepest man. Very, very dangerous. 
line drive kick though and this is going to go out of the back of the end zone so no return good job by Hen on the kickoff and the volunteers will go from the 20. Well, tonight at ESPN2, the Arizona Wildcats taking on the Utah Utes, 9 o'clock Eastern. This is a nice quarterback matchup. Arizona's Ortiz Jenkins and Utah's Darnell Arsenault. And for more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. Mike, you think we'll see a little different sequence this time on uh, Joey Matthews' yeah, part? Yeah, I, I, again, I go back to what I figured. Short passes and give the ball to Travis Henry. David Martin in motion to the top of your screen. And they give it to Travis Henry. Nice job. This contain is right out there to make the hit. That's Chad Williams, the free safety. And let's check in with Adrian Carson. Adrian? All right, center. Fred Wary is a converted defensive tackle, Ron. He has great defensive instincts. The problem is when he snaps the ball, the young man perspires a lot. It may sound silly, but here's the deal. They changed his trousers after pregame. They're going to change him after the first quarter. They're going to change him at halftime. They're going to change him after the first quarter. He perspires so much, and that's one of the reasons Joy Matthews fumbles so much. More in a minute. Okay, we'll, we'll let you keep an eye on that, Adrian. Three to nothing, Southern Mississippi leads. Pitch back goes to Henry. Got a little corridor, breaks the tackle. What a great second and third effort. It's going to be a gain of 12 yards in the play as Leo Barnes finally wrapped him up. And listen to this crowd responding. As Gill came up to hit him, he just broke right through the tackle. And Mike, in visiting with him day before yesterday after practice, what a sweetheart of a kid. I mean, he just he just wants an opportunity to help this team. Ron, he's going to he's just 11, 27 yards away from being the all-time career rushing leader at Tennessee and he's only started eight games so he's been productive Travis tonight three carries 25 yards pretty good average per tote bounces back this time and is going to be knocked down that is a nice job defensively De Quincy Scott got underneath the shoulder pads of Munoz that time and shoved the runner back. Ron, nothing's going to come easy for Tennessee on offense tonight against this defense because they have defensive line, Southern Miss, talking about. And I'm watching Tennessee's offensive line is not knocking them off the football. Matter of fact, they're all pad under pad, as you said. Mike, as we go on, I want you to talk about the difficulty of this defense okay. and how their movement and stunts really confuse not only the quarterback, but the offensive line. Drop right to him. And Summersault close to the first down. Raymond Walls is a man who's setting flying, but it's a gain of nine yards for Travis Henry. Well, Travis Henry is the offense for Tennessee right now. Philip Fulmer didn't didn't like the way the first series had gone with, with the interception. Joy Matthews, you're trying to build confidence in your young quarterback, but Travis Henry seems to say, "Hey, put it on my shoulders. I'll take this football down the field." That's what he talked about the other day. He is he is a leader. He is a senior. That time, Munoz allowed the defensive end to come across used his impetus and just took him a road him out of the play nice job with the freshman five carries now 34 yards for Henry and give it to him again the workhorse tries to take it right up the middle and he's not going to have the first down decision time the first big one for Philip Fulmer this year do you go for it here do you kick it away put them in the hole no you, you don't you can't go for this football with this good defense here. I think you got to punt the football. Delroy Stewart, who is a senior out of Vero Beach, Florida. 6'4", 305 is the man that made the tackle as you look at Leverton on the far sideline. No movement. Yes, now there's movement. And David will come on. Scattered booze, but... Uh, no, that's, that you, you're playing against a big league defense here. David Leverton is a big league punter. He may be the best punter in the country, so he ought to be able to flip-flop the field. Leverton, his longest last year, 56 yards. He averaged right at 43. And this is a beauty. A long hanging spiral. And Mills all the way back to the six yard line. And great coverage. And now here comes a flag in as he is tackled at the 19. And the this is against the Golden Eagles. They're going to scrimmage from very deep in their own territory. And that's why you punt the football, Ron, because you, you want to play to your defense. That's the strength of your football team and David Leverton, your punter. Leverton, 51 yards in his first kick tonight. That was an 11 yard return. But from uh, the direction that Steve Shaw is looking in, this is really going to turn into a wise decision on the part of Coach Fulmer. During the return, illegal block in the back on the return team. Half the distance to the goal. Boy, the new line of scrimmage is the eight-yard line. We'll talk about it when we return. 6.40 left, opening quarter, Southern Mississippi. Three, Tennessee nothing. 
Southern Mississippi three, Tennessee nothing. And tonight's athletic trivia question. Tennessee's number 12 preseason ranking ended a streak of 54 straight weeks being ranked 10th or better in the nation. And our question is, what school holds the all-time record for consecutive weeks ranked in the top 10? The answer, later on. Ron, I don't know the answer, but I love that commercial. Athlete. You know. <laughs> that, You're the that duck, That is huh? the best. <laughs> You're the duck. That is the best, and he throws that popcorn on that guy. <laughs> Eric Westmoreland. And then his other defensive counterparts signaling uh, to the stands, hey, make some noise. We got him back up inside their own 10 yard line. Kelly gives it to Nix. Back into the boundary. Look at this. Hit at the line of scrimmage. And then he fights his way forward. That's a nice second effort by Nix. And it was Marsh who knocked him off his feet. Southern Miss with two tight ends now trying to help their offensive line a little bit by stretching the defense. Derek Nix, who's recruited very heavily, he wanted to be a running back. The only two schools, Georgia Tech, Southern Miss, would play him at a running back. He was a very fine linebacker in high school. Atala, Alabama. He's home, 6'2", 226. Gets it again, straight up the middle. Nice hold on the right side, and he will have the first down for Mississippi Southern. Dominique Stevenson is there to make the top. This is this is good strategy by Southern Miss because they're balancing up the defense. Derek Nix uh, said on the phone to us the other day, he tries to pattern himself after Eddie George. Speaking of outstanding young men, Derek Nix, uh, he was great to visit with the other day, only a junior. Again, one of those team kind of guys who was a leader. They'll use him as a running back and also as a wide receiver. You see that pass completed and up over the 30-yard line is going to be Leroy Handy. And that's good for 10 yards. And it would appear another Southern Mississippi first down. Ron, Jeff Kelly is going to be forced to throw the football. See the pocket collapsing right here. Uh, they're going to be in his face all night. But a good throw out to Leroy Handy. Three wide receivers to the top of the screen and one to the bottom. On first down, here comes the pressure. Sack at the 20, the second time they've gotten to him, and it's Dominique Stevenson. Ron, if I'm John Chavis, I just keep bringing the heat against this offensive line, especially inside, because they can't handle the Tennessee speed. You see up inside, they come untouched. They come from the outside. Stevenson came from the right outside. Nobody picked him up. When you go empty, usually that means no backs in the backfield. The defense ultimately is going to blitz you all the time. That was Hainsworth also, number 92, who helped out on the sack. They throw the screen into the middle. Tackle is broken at the 25, and it's Sean Mills who will take it out to around the 28-yard line. Overstreet finally made the stop on him. Ron, you talk about uh, talking to Jeff Kelly the other day and Derek Nix. I like what Jeff Kelly said about college football. He said the exposure, you get the ability to influence. I take that with a lot of responsibility. I, I just really, uh, I liked Jeff Kelly and I enjoyed talking to him today. He's what college football, he's the, he's the good in college football. Southern Mississippi, 0 for 2 in third down conversion so far. The line to make is out just across the 41-yard line. Linebackers are creeping up. Here they come. Kelly under pressure. Lost the football. And it looks as though, yes, the Golden Eagles have recovered the fumble, but he had it knocked out, and it's Kendrick is the man who made the hit. Big number 93, the sophomore out of Macon, Georgia, 6'4", 265. This is, again, Ron, this is an area that I think Tennessee has an advantage in, the punt return team, because they have so much speed on this football team, they can take advantage of Southern Miss. Hallman, his first kick, 44 yards tonight. Eric Parker is the deep man. Pressure from the outside, and he overran it. The kick was not blocked. He overran it. He was so far beyond. And we'll get a look at it on the replay as the ball is going to be touched dead at the 32-and-a-half-yard line. Greer was there. 46 yards in the kick. Watch what happens, Mike. Yeah, Jabari Greer is going to come from the outside. 
got a little block out of his wing back, but not much of one. Well, Southern Mississippi is indeed fortunate that that they didn't have that ball blocked and it recovered either for a touchdown or back inside the 20 yard line. Tennessee and Joey Matthews from the 32 yard line. Travis Henry still fighting. He's going to cross the 35 and it's Keon Moore who will bring him down. Sunday night NFL season premiere kicks off tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern. Tennessee takes on Buffalo. The Bills looking to avenge the Music City Miracle. The ABC's Monday Night Football. The past two Super Bowl champions collide. Denver taking on Kurt Warner and the St. Louis Rams. ESPN and ABC, your home for primetime NFL football. <laughs> Edward Kendrick, who caused havoc just a moment ago in the Golden Eagle backfield. This time from the shotgun formation, Fred Weary, the snapper. They keep it on the ground. Travis Henry breaks it out. 45, 50, and he's loose. Travis Henry all the way down inside the 20-yard line. Kill saves the touchdown. Huh? Travis Henry really made a nice move in the hole. right here and cuts back against the green good vision by the nice young running back Travis Henry Byron Gill finally makes the tackle did you notice Martin watch 87 out in front and look at his head talk about on a swivel looking to block downfield anywhere he can can help out and score this touchdown he didn't block anybody no he, did. he was looking very hard <laughs> he looked good though <laughs> Eight carries, 80 yards for Travis Henry. Quick pass out in the flat. They get that to Dante Stallward. It's going to be a pickup of about seven yards. And let's check in again with Adrian Carson. Adrian. Ryan, last time I talked to you, talking about Fred Weary, who is a converted defensive tackle. Now, that's the first shotgun snap we have seen tonight. He wants to wear a towel to help out his quarterback, Joey Matthews. Obviously, you don't want to wear a towel if you're a center when you shotgun snap. The NCAA says you have one towel you can wear, or actually two, rather, per unit. They've decided Tennessee has to wear it on the guards. 12 inches by 4 inches. That's all Joy Matthews has to wipe his hands on before Freddy snaps the ball. See, they're promoting smaller-handed quarterbacks, uh, Adrian. Straight ahead, and this is Travis Stevens, the junior out of Clarksville, Tennessee, breaks off the tackle inside the 10, and he's down to the 6. It is first and goal. Raymond Walls had to come up and make the touchdown-saving tackle. And Ron, the running game of Tennessee is uh, giving Joy Matthews time to get comfortable. Travis Henry's the one, one punch, and then Travis Stevens comes off the bench. He didn't play last year. His dad was ill. Uh, he comes in. He gives him good speed. Travis Henry and Travis Stevens really took them to the national championship uh, two years ago. This is Jamal Lewis got hurt. This is a terrific one two punch. You see his numbers from last year 513 yards. They offset the eye. Bartholomew back in at fullback and he's the lead blocker. Stevens tries to bounce it outside and that is a nice job defensively. Number 20 Leo Barnes who had the interception earlier and returned at 33 yards to set up Southern Mississippi's field goal. Played off the block and knocked him out of bounds. Leo Barnes, you're right, Ron. Watch how he does this. So he takes on Will Bartholomew right there, never lets him get to his feet, and then makes the tackle on the outside. That's the way you play defense. You don't get knocked down. Of course, he gets a little face mask there. <laughs> Doesn't get a call. Travis Henry comes back into the lineup. The situation is second down and goal, Tennessee. They trail three to nothing as we are under two minutes to play in this opening quarter. Matthews from the shotgun looks back into the short side of the field ball is tipped and it is caught for the touchdown and it is Cedric Wilson. They are so fortunate that didn't go 100 yards for a touchdown with an interception well, return. Cedric Scott did what he was supposed to do. He got to Joey Matthews and he caused the ball to go up in the air. But the Southern Miss defensive back didn't react. Oh, 
So it's been an interesting first quarter for uh, for Joey Matthews. But he's got his he's got his first touchdown yeah, of the year 2000. Ahead. Alex Walls with the extra point of tip up and it is good. There is a flag down in the base of the end zone. He had 12 men in the field. Southern didn't help him. Joey Matthews took a hit to his shoulder run. Here's the play right here. Cedric Scott's going to come to the top of the screen. He jars Joey Matthews and the ball pops up in the air. Cedric Wilson alertly comes down with that football and puts Tennessee ahead. So let's check in tonight with Brian Kelly. Brian? Ron, thank you very much. Check in with you. Well, they got the veteran quarterback back, Oklahoma, and uh, that team is going to be good defensively, I think. And UTEP's got Gary Nord coaching him now. He's the head coach. He used to be an assistant for Howard Snellenberger at Oklahoma, so uh, it probably means a lot to him to go back there and play the Sooners. 67 yards, six plays, under two minutes on the scoring drive. And as you look at Matthews, I talked about it's been an interesting first quarter. It's been an interesting summer. He and his girlfriend were in a wreck in his SUV. The thing turned head over heels three times and then went over sideways about another five or six. And uh, he walked away from that. And uh, it's <laughs> it, it has been a very difficult summer. Raymond Walls with a return from the end zone. Nice coverage by Tennessee. He'll be stopped short of the 20. And let's check again with Adrian. Ron, part of the experience, or inexperience rather, of a young quarterback is knowing how to finish the play. Now, when Joy Matthews finishes the handoff or finishes the pass, he's got to finish out the play. He did not previously. Took a major shot to his left shoulder, fill an ice bag. He should be in the next series, but he's going to ice that left shoulder. Okay, Adrian. Well, you could see he was really slow to get up there, but he's obviously a tough young guy. First down for Southern Mississippi, and uh, as far as momentum in this first quarter, Tennessee has taken it away in the last six to seven minutes. They faked the blitz. Ball was moved. And I think Steve Shaw is going to call it motion again it appeared what happened there that uh, Jeff Kelly was calling the signal signal and Jim Hicks didn't snap the football on the offense where he moved the football now Jim Hicks is starting tonight as the second team center Let's see if he flinches now that's just enough there the ball moves and that's what a good nose tackle will make you do We'll get that ball back there as quick as we can. So it's first down at 15. And now mistakes creeping in to the actions of Southern Mississippi in the late going of this uh, opening quarter. Straight ahead with a running play. And this is Dwayne Woods. He is the number two tailback. And I'll tell you, the head coach yesterday here said, I like Derek Nixon. He can do a lot of things, but he said Woods gives him a burst that he can change a game in one handoff. Yeah, he told me the same thing on Wednesday. He said uh, Dwayne Woods, when he's going to come into the ball game, he scares me because he can take it uh, right to the end zone. Well, you see his average from last year, 5.2. That was a 10-yard carry right there. Now second down at about five yards for the Golden Eagles. Tennessee leads it 7-3. to three. Kelly going to tuck it and run. Will have the first down. Breaks a tackle and he's loose at the 50. Trying to get out of bounds and he's helped out at the 44-yard line by Gaines. That is a gain of 33 yards by Jeff Kelly. And Jeff Kelly picked the right time to run because Tennessee was really bailed out on zone coverage here. There is nobody in the middle of the football field. Here's what he sees right now. Now he's going to cut back in inside. And shows pretty good speed. Well, guess what? That 33-yard run is the longest of his career.
Kelly steps up, not going to be able to throw, and he's going to be sacked for the third time. Ball is loose. And Tennessee is recovered. Omari Hand, a sophomore out of Tallahassee, Florida, caused the turnover. And we showed the Nebraska tape this morning in the cut-in the mistakes that they made last year against Nebraska. Bernard Jackson recovers the fumble. Jeff Kelly, a little indecision around whether to run or throw the football, but he's under duress by that Tennessee speed on defense. Well, you can be a smart quarterback, but when you're having to react as quickly as he is, it's virtually impossible, isn't it? Right. Matthews, play action, going to go on top, and well, either a misread or just a bad overthrow on the part of uh, Joey Matthews. One other note about him, and <laughs> he said his love is horses. He lives in Sevier County, which is Sevierville, not too terribly far from here. In fact, the home of Dolly Parton, and, uh, or where she grew up. He loves horses, and he said to get away from the media and all the conversation about who's the best quarterback and if he is not good enough to play with it. He and his girlfriend get on the horses, and they go ride in the mountains. No, I think that's great. Matthews, three of five, one interception and one touchdown. Southern Shields blitz on the outside, straight ahead with Travis Henry. Caught him with a good play call on the defense that they had called for that play, and Travis is very close to another first down. Houston makes the stop. That is the end of the first quarter. So as they change ends of the field, we'll take a timeout. If Tennessee gaining momentum with each possession, and it's the defense that has done the job. They lead 7-3. Well, uh, a lot of good popcorn and refreshments underneath the stadium. Here, a couple of defensive stats as far as uh, the two defenses are concerned. Dominique Stevenson for Tennessee already has five tackles in the game, and four of those are solo tackles. And leading Southern Mississippi is Barnes. He's had an outstanding game. Three tackles, all three are solo, and he also has an interception. As you look at Dominique on the far sideline. Dominique, a senior out of Gaffney, South Carolina. Matthews straight ahead with the quarterback sneak, and that should be enough for the Tennessee first down. And you're talking about Joy Matthews coming from right around here in Knoxville. Here comes Eric Locke on the field as we talk. But Joy Matthews told me it was always his dream to be the quarterback here, and he went back to his high school last week for the game. He said everybody was patting him on the back and telling him how proud they were of him to be the quarterback at Tennessee. He's going to play a wide receiver. He is not going under center. So that means that Locke, number two, and look for a draw on Murfreesboro, Tennessee. He was a high school quarterback. He is only 5'9", 180, but has outstanding speed. There's the draw, wrapped up in the backfield, and Locke is hit by Delroy Stewart. And the reason I said draw is because Southern Miss has been reading about Eric Locke all fall camp so what they're going to do is they're going to come in here and say okay if you're going to play him at quarterback then let's see if he can throw the football well the other thing that Tennessee can do is you look at the replay yeah there's Joy Matthews right here Eric Locke is the quarterback so they keep the same personnel on so you don't make any adjustments with personnel Delroy Stewart on the tackle that was the point I was about to make that's the reason that you can catch a defense off guard but now it's Matthews who goes in the shotgun second down and 15 and you see all the movement on the part of the defense of Southern Mississippi pass is almost intercepted and I'm telling you Chad Williams would have gone for a 56 yard touchdown and Joey Matthews has he is throwing late Mike Ron it looks like he his arm strength to the outside is, is not as good as it, you you'd expect on these two plays he had one picked off but it, but Travis Steve, or Travis Henry was backing into him and this one was thrown late if you get to stare a guy down you sure as heck better not throw it late you are asking for disaster He's had one picked off tonight, and very fortunate that he did not just have a, a second one picked off. Lockett quarterback again, third down and 15. Draw play. Boy, he gets hammered by Chad Williams. 
Now Eric Locke is a strong guy. Now he's 5'8", 175, but he holds the front, uh, freshman bench press record at Alabama, 415 pounds because he started at Alabama uh, and he transferred here to Tennessee. Last time he played quarterback was a couple years ago at Alabama as a freshman. Well, let's see if Leverton comes in and uh, bails him out. Tennessee had a great opportunity with the first down at the 43 yard line and unable to do anything with it and a pooch kick by Leverton to the far sideline. This is Mills with a fair catch and he makes it at the 10 yard line. 35 yards and a kick but he did exactly what he wanted to do. It's a lost art uh, pin in a team down at Coffin corner but corner but David Leverton's a very solid punter. Well, the answer to tonight's Aflac trivia question, what school holds the all-time record for consecutive weeks ranked in the top ten? Well, the answer, the Miami Hurricanes, 135 consecutive weeks, and that was between 1985 and 1993. Let's hear the duck again, Mike. Dwayne Woods is the lone setback for the Golden Eagles. Tennessee leads it 7-3. There he goes right up the middle and caught by the back of the jersey. And it is Henderson. Big John grabbed onto him, the junior out of Nashville, 6'7, 290 pounds. When John Henderson graduated from high school, people in recruiting compared him to Reggie White out of high school. Now he has to be the leader of this defense, the defensive line. again the running back they fake it to him Kelly under pressure and he gets knocked out at the five-yard line Eric Westmoreland the heart and soul of that Tennessee defense is there to just again Kelly does not even have time to react no he's he's coming from the outside oh Ron you talk about Eric Westmoreland one of the three captains on this Tennessee football team he's gonna come out of the outside here nobody blocks him and just makes the hit on Jeff Kelly and now pins the Southern Miss deeper. Actually, it was Anthony Stevens, or Sessions, 22 rather than 42 Westmoreland. Third down and 15 from the five. Swings it out to Woods. Wood put on a good move. He's going to take it all the way out to the 18-yard line. He'll miss the first down by about a yard, but he had a gain of 14, and he actually juked that one defensive player off his feet and gives the punter a little room now to punt this football. So on that defensive play again, making the correction, I beg your pardon, I thought it was 42, but it was 22, Anthony Sessions, who made the big tackle on the quarterback. Yeah, he's a former free safety and a former uh, high school quarterback. All of their linebackers are either former quarterbacks or running backs. backs. Or running backs. <laughs> Speed. Hallman, a sophomore out of Vicksburg. That's a good pass and bangs this one. All the way back to the 27 yard line is Parker and he is going to be tackled as he crosses the 35 yard line that is an outstanding 44 yard kick and eight on a return Gill made the tackle will return with more from Knoxville right after this 49 left in this opening half and the ball faithful enjoying what they're seeing so far particularly from the defense and it has been the defense that has led the way for them so far need to go back to Travis Henry a little bit more well, that's exactly what they're going to do is the pitch back goes to Travis Henry hit by Derek Scott and knocked down behind the line of scrimmage and now all of a sudden Southern Mississippi seems as though they're feeling a little bit more comfortable in this game set on down in a low scoring game favors them because the longer as an underdog you can stay around the better chance you have to pull in the upset but Ron Derek Scott they got De Quincy Scott they got Cedric Scott all three defensive linemen so Mike Berry the other day he said just block Scott you know you, you, <laughs> you, you make sure you're all right you believe that Derek Scott De Quincy Scott Cedric Scott no relation Second down and 15, and Troy Fleming, a freshman out of Franklin, Tennessee, comes in at pullback. Matthew sets and throws it out in the flat and overthrows Troy Fleming, the man we were just talking about. And let's check in again with Brian Kenny.
Battle of Colorado. Colorado State down 24-14, but Matt Newton spinning. Get a little room up top to Frank Rice. 42-yard touchdown pass. It's now 24-21 Colorado there in the third quarter. And Lou Holtz looking for his first win at South Carolina. They lead New Mexico State 17-0, trying to snap the nation's longest losing streak. Break up South Carolina. Yeah, they there, might there, be there, starting there, to plan the dance. <laughs> Well, I, I tell you what, what a throw by the uh, Colorado State quarterback. Huh? He slung that thing Boy, 60 yards know, without the effort. Gary Barnett took a beating there against that team last year. Now Tennessee has to call a timeout, and the head coach a little nervous about what he has seen on the offensive side of the ball, I would say. 9.59 to play. Right back. 7-3, Tennessee having to use a timeout. The numbers on Joey Matthews tonight. Three of seven, one interception, four hurries, 19 yards, and one touchdown. Trying to build confidence in him. Uh, right now, I'd, I'd say he hasn't built a lot of confidence. Eric Locks on the football field now. Every time he comes on the football field, Ron, you got to target him if you're if you're Southern Miss, and you got to make him throw the football. So there's Lock lined up in the shotgun. He'll take the direct snap from Fred Weary, and it's a draw. And he's going to have about five yards, and that's it. Darius McKenzie stops him. Again, you know, if you're Southern Miss, you didn't scout Tennessee, you read the things in the paper, you're saying he, he's a good athlete, and he's a former high school quarterback, wishbone quarterback, but he has to prove to us he can throw the football before we're going to open up the run to him. So Leverton called on to do his specialty. Third punt of the night. And good coverage kick. Very high. Spiral will turn over. And the catch is made at the 27 by Sean Mills. No. Later in the telecast, we'll be announcing our player of the game. And all season long, you can go online to select the winner by casting your vote on ESPN.com. So later in the third quarter, keep an eye out on the list of nominees. Then make your selection throughout the fourth quarter. Ron, Southern Miss cannot afford a bad loss yardage play. They can't recover from it. It looks like the five-yard penalty yeah. way down here. They can't recover. The sack on first down. They need to go on Got a target. Positive yardage on first down. All the time. Kelly, he's going to have it. Throws it right across the middle. That's Leroy Handy. And Handy's going to have a gain of about five yards. Jeff Kelly, when we talked to him on the phone, he said, uh, you asked him about what tape he watched most of Tennessee's, and he said Florida, because Florida and Doug Johnson attacked the defense of Tennessee, and he said, I really like their game plan. Derek Nix, the lone setback. Tennessee by four. We're now under nine minutes to play in this opening half. Kelly drills his pass, has it complete to Handy, and there's a the first down as he'll take it out to the 49-yard line, 16 yards in the play. And credit the offensive line because we were talking about how they didn't protect him early in the first quarter, but they're protecting him now. Tennessee with a four-man rush, and you, you see right there, Jeff Kelly's getting rid of the ball quick, by the and that'll discourage the blitz. By the way, moms and dads, you got your kids sitting in the room. You're going to love Jeff Kelly. Graduated in three years. He's a finance major, and he said it was always first at his house. He had to make good grades first, and then athletics came second. Gives the ball off straight ahead to Derek Nix. Going to cross the 50-yard line, take it to the 49 before D'Angelo Lloyd made the stop. We asked him, are you going to be a broker or what? And he said, jury's out on that, but I'm going to have my MBA by the time I leave oh, he, He's the all-American guy, and uh, he coached Little League Baseball in his hometown. He won the league, and he said, I, I to, once you win the league, then you get to coach the All-Star game. But I had to go back and practice football, so I couldn't, <laughs> pra couldn't be the All-Star coach. He does it right. Three wide receivers to the right, to the top of your screen. Here comes the blitz. Yep, they creep up on that side, and here they come. Picked up nicely by Nix. Kelly looking for a secondary guy, and he was very smart. Just threw it into the ground as Garner 
is the man who was the tendered receiver. Garner's his best friend and was a quarterback, but he is such a good athlete. He's beefed up to like 225. They use him at tight end. I asked him today, I said, now he's your roommate on the road. Now, are you going to favor throwing to him? And he smiled. He said, I really like Bobby. And he said, he's going to make people uh, defend the field because he has good speed as a tight end. Third down, line to make the Tennessee 41. Volunteers lead it by four. We have 732 until halftime. Linebackers creeping up again, and Torin Tucker came out of his stance. Check it. Jeremy Bridges came out of his stance. A junior out of Macomb, Mississippi, just right up the road from Hattiesburg. It'll cost him five, and again, a mental error. Yeah, and what Derek Nix went up to the official and said, he, he may be... Dead ball, ball start on the offense, five-yard penalty. Sometimes a defensive player will simulate the snap count with a, with a sound, and that's a complaint that Derek Nix had with the official. But you, I don't think this team can overcome bad plays and penalties because they're too inexperienced in the offensive line. You get the chance here. Look across the way. That is A.J. Suggs warming up, throwing the football on the Tennessee bench. If I see him. Third down, 12. Kelly retreats, good protection, swings it out to Nix, turns it up the field, and nice job defensively by Stephen Marsh. I'll tell you, your angle of pursuit had better be correct if you're going to tackle a Derek Nix because he'll be by you before you know it. Yeah, but now, Ron, you, you'd say to your offense when they come off the side, Jeff Bauer's going to tell them, hey, that's a pretty good job because we flipped the field again. Now we're going to put our defense back against their offense inside the 20. It's a field position game in this football game. Three punts, an average of 47.7 yards for Holman. Parker, the deep man for the Volunteers. Low pass gets it away, and this is a pooch kick. Fair catch is signal for and is made at the 15 by Parker. 34 yards and a kick. There's a timeout, 7-18 remaining until halftime, and the Volunteers continue to lead by four. Tennessee and we're ready at the Tennessee Sports Fan. The Tennessee Sports Fan has got more UT stuff than anybody. We've got hats and shirts and jerseys and flags and license plates. You name it. Get it at the Tennessee Sports Fan. Don't miss out this season. Show your colors. Orange, that is. Whatever Tennessee team you follow, we've got your gear. Come in and see. Next to Service Merchandise Rivergate. Next to the Wild Horse Saloon on 2nd Avenue. Next to Home Depot Hickory Hollow. Neighborhood 3 in Opry Mills and Thoroughbred Village Cool Springs. So Joey Matthews is watching this series from the bench and coming into the ballgame is A.J. Suggs out of Potter Springs, Georgia. And Ron, he's a wing T quarterback in high school, but he throws better on the run. So I look for Philip Fulmer and Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, to move him out of the pocket. Big youngster, 6'5", 220 pounds. Cedric Wilson in motion. Sets up as a blocker straight ahead with Travis Stevens. And good second effort. Ball comes loose. And they're going to say, nope, he was down. But the ground caused the fumble. And that large sound you heard from across the way was not the student section. It was Phil Fulmer <laughs> giving a huge sigh of relief. He does not want to give up this football at his 20-yard line, obviously. Yeah, good he, call. He, good call. He was down. And looking, Travis Stevens certainly uh, a very good backup, but we now understand that Travis Henry has suffered dehydration. He will return, but that's the reason we're seeing 34. Travis Stevens right now gets the pitch, turns the corner at the 20, and he'll take it to the 25, but as you can see from the marker, he is going to be about a yard and a half short. Houston on the tackle for Southern Mississippi. Ron, this is not the way you would have scripted if your Tennessee coaches Joey Matthews de debut because he's three out of seven and now all of a sudden you've had Eric Locke in there and now you've got A.J. Suggs in there that doesn't settle any of the quarterbacks down but you don't have scrimmage games it's not like the NFL where you have preseason games this is a game where you're trying to find out which quarterback can handle Florida they get Florida two weeks from tonight right here in Knoxville 
Third down and very short. Stevens will have the first down. He's being pushed back, but it looked as though forward progress. De Quincy Scott, the senior out of Laplace, Louisiana, is there to make the tackle, but it would appear from where the side judge came in and put a foot down. Going to move the chain. Going back to the quarterback situation, uh, Philip Fulmer thought Casey Clawson was going to be his quarterback, and he uh, hurt his shoulder, just threw too much, and uh, stopped throwing about August 15th. And now he's a 6'4 freshman that has a lot of ability, and he will be in the race here after this game, too, but he's not going to play he tonight. He threw on Thursday, and yesterday the therapist was in with him in the indoor facility and was watching him throw and uh, trying to work with himself. So Casey Clawson could wind up being the guy when he gets healthy. On the run, Seth gets it out to Fleming, and it will be another Tennessee first down, good for 11 yards. I was at a banquet in Macon, Georgia, where uh, A.J. Suggs was honored as the uh, football player of the year in that, that area and uh, sat beside him that night. He's a very intelligent quarterback, but he's best when you roll him out, just as they did there. Troy Fleming with a catch. Boy, Leo Barnes with still another tackle. He's got at least six in this uh, in this first half, and five of them are solo. Maybe all six are solo. We'll double check it. Sucks. The Fleming and the other boundary. That was very close to a late hit yeah. by that uh, second defender coming in. Chad Williams credited with the tackle. Reminds me of uh, some uh, a fast food uh, shop putting a sign in the cook wanted, you know, quarterback wanted here at uh, Tennessee, and all of a sudden, A.J. Suggs is getting a little hot here as a, as a quarterback. You know what? To Rod Davis is on his behalf looking from the other angle. The reason he came Pushed. down on it, the ball came loose, and he was going trying to recover. So that's the reason he came in a little bit late, and the reason no flag was thrown. Suggs, two of two, 18 yards. Travis Stevens hit behind the line of scrimmage, and that's an outstanding job by Roy McGee. Ron, when A.J. Suggs came on the field, the receivers had three catches here. Now, Cedric Wilson and David Martin, Dante Stallworth, and Eric Parker, they're used to catching a lot of passes. And all of a sudden, they're in a ball game. They're not catching footballs. And uh, so they're looking for the football. They want somebody to, to get the ball to them on the outside. Really? It's a very good receiving core. It really gets frustrating to receivers who are accustomed to seeing so many passes. This time, Lock is in the game, but as you can see, is split out. From the shotgun, Suggs, a rolling to the left. Gonna have to hurry. Incomplete as David Martin was the closest man to it. But that was Roy McGee who was putting pressure on, and Tennessee will have to punt it again. A.J. Suggs with a pretty good performance. A little late on that throw, but Roy McGee helped that. You mentioned David Leverton. He may be the most valuable player in this football game for Tennessee. Four punts, the fourth by Leverton tonight. Oh, this is a beautiful high hanging kick. It's going to hit at the five, and it's going to go into the end zone. <laughs> Next Saturday at ESPN College Game Day, start your day at 11 Eastern from Notre Dame. Then at noon, the Marshall Thundering Herd takes on 18-game winning streak on the road against 22nd-ranked Michigan State. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. Michigan State better get ready for Marshall. The Mid-American had a big win with Toledo and Gary Pinko today. And Notre Dame, big win for Bob Davey and the Irish. Beating a pretty good Texas A&M football team today. Yeah. So Jeff Kelly and company take it over at the 20-yard line. They trail by four, seven to three. Short drop this time. Steps up, gets the pass away, and that's Leroy Handy. And Handy, I think, has caught at least the last three passes. They have really gotten together and combined well. He had one catch last season. In the opening ball game against Tulane, he had to catch and didn't catch anything the rest of the year. Jeff Bauer said he's the most improved receiver we had in spring practice in this fall practice. Youngster 6'1", 195, Leroy is out of Beaumont, Mississippi. Four catches for him for 48 yards tonight. Kelly. 
short drop, pressure, going to be sacked. It's again, whenever you get the collapsing pocket in center, Jim Hicks is just getting pushed back into Jeff Kelly. That's six sacks by this uh, Tennessee defense in the first half. Look at this, Ron. You, I don't care who you are as a quarterback. You know, when you get pushed back into the quarterback's face, you can't throw the football. That was Moore, a sophomore out of Huntsville, Alabama, number 58, who made the tackle. Now second down and long. This goes back to the point you made a moment ago. Negative yardage on first down. Yep, can't do it. Short drop. Kelly going to run for his life. That's Westmoreland who will hit him and knock him down after a gain of, oh, it's about six yards in the play. Tennessee's going to use their timeouts and uh, try to get the football back. So timeout with 153 left until halftime, and we'll take it with them. The Volunteers continue to lead, but they have only one touchdown in this opening half. We'll be right back. 7-3, to three and it's punting time by Southern Mississippi. And Mike, I think we need to keep an eye on number 33. Third down, I beg your pardon. Third down. Jabari Greer, Ron, who you're talking about, he had a nice quote in the paper the other day. He said, he's a freshman. And he said, I hope they test me. I want to get my stats up real quick. So you talk about confidence now. He said, I want these Tennessee fans to know you can count on me as a freshman. John Chavis really likes both of those freshman corners, Greer and also Rashad Baker as well. Woods is the setback. Got to take it out to the 46 as Kelly looks. Got a man and incomplete at the 40 in the Southern bench would like pass interference call but they're not going to get it. I think it was that miles was, in the cover. Yeah I think that was Derek Nix lined up at tight end. He played tight end as a freshman against Penn State in the opener. He has very good hands real close to pass interference. Yeah, they're just a breath early. Yeah real close. Now keep an eye on number 33 Clark. Parker is the deep man. He's on the right side of the outside. He almost got one. In fact, he, he kind of overran it two punts ago. Didn't get him free this time, though. Nice job by the Golden Eagles. And Parker takes it. No fair catch and is going to lose about six yards on the return. And let's check in with Brian Kidding. Ron, coming up at the half, Sports Center in game, the full sports highlight. UCLA taking it to the SEC champs. Mets and Cards with a duel in St. Louis. Todd Helton's chase for 400. And Chris Lee and Kirk will look at Penn State and much, much more. That's Sports Center in game coming up at the half, Ron. Already, we look forward to it. Todd Helton played here as a quarterback. You and I had that game when he tried to break in as the quarterback and eventually Peyton Manning. Boy, how great a story job. is he this year? Huh? Oh. <laughs> Joey Matthews comes back into the ball game with 137 showing on the clock. Looking to throw, throws it back into the boundary. That is a great defensive play. Stallworth made the catch as they were trying to get that one-man screen out there, and Walls would have none of it. That is truly outstanding. Timeout is called. We'll take it with him. Clock runs, and, well, it is still running at 119. And tennis, uh, Southern Miss has two timeouts left. If they stop him here, I'll, I believe they'll use the timeout. I, uh, I was told it was a timeout. I beg your pardon. Travis Stevens continues to operate at tailback. And Affleck duck. Now use the timeout. Tripped up after a gain of a couple. Players are looking to the sideline. I think Jeff Bauer feels pretty good about the way he stands right now at 7-3. Not going to use the timeout. And Ron, when you take, you go into both these teams, Philip Fulmer concerned about his quarterback situation. That's going to be the talk in their locker room. Who's going to come out and play? Southern Miss has to be concerned about the offensive line. Both defenses are the strong points of these teams. Jeff Bauer still letting the officials know his displeasure over that non-interference call just a moment ago. Travis Stevens hit behind the line of scrimmage, and he's just run over. And that's John Nix. Now again, the, the fans getting on a little bit of the play calling, but 
Right now, Randy Sanders, Philip Fulmer, they want to get to the locker room and try to settle their young football team down. So we're at halftime with our scores. They head to the locker room. It's Tennessee 7 and Southern Mississippi 3. Now it's Sports Center in game. Brian Kenny with the Buick halftime report. 7 to 3 Tennessee leads and I have to admit it reminds me of the days of General Nealon. The last time Tennessee would have 38 yards passing at halftime. Mike obviously you got to discuss the quarterback situation. What are they going to do. Well Casey Clawson's not going to play tonight. So I think Eric Locke gives him the best shot but he has to throw the ball. They can't just run draws with him. They've got to get him to throw throw the football. Joy Matthews uh, four for eight 19 yards had the interception the touchdown but he was hit when he threw the touchdown A.J. Suggs came in did a pretty good job two out of three but all three of those quarterbacks probably feel unsettled because they know they're not the man yet and uh, one of them's got to get hot here in the second half. Let's take a look at the first half stats and you can draw a lot from these numbers and see just what has and has not happened for both teams. Yeah what what doesn't show there is the pass protection for Southern Miss uh, and Jeff Kelly's been been under duress this entire football game. Six sacks of Kelly in the first half. Uh, I'll tell you the Tennessee defense had not played as well as they have and continually putting pressure on Kelly. Uh, they could be down in this football game. Longer you hang around as an yep. underdog the yep. better you, you feel about your chances to win the game and Jeff Bauer I'm sure talked about it in the locker room at halftime. You know we got a shot to win this football game. We just got to put some offense together. Got to continue to play good on defense and don't give up anything big in the special team. Well it was just about a year ago this time last year when Nebraska had to score two defensive touchdowns to beat them they held Nebraska to only one offensive score in that game Leonard Scott he's going to be stopped short of the 20 and let's check again with Adrian Adrian well Ron I talked to Randy Sanders offensive coordinator and a very good quarterbacks coach here with Tennessee as he came out of the locker room I said who's going to start the second half at quarterback he said Joey Matthews after I strangled him Joey Matthews will start a quarterback the second half by the coaches count he only passed one pass over 15 yards now obviously Cedric Wilson has something to say about that he says we need to throw deep quarterback is losing so much to the players he is to the coach but they've got to open up the offense run conservative is the last word you would associate with Tennessee's offense since 1998. I'll come back to Adrian. Got a pass on first down gets the quick look in pass and he's got it complete to Cedric Wilson. You can go one of one of two ways Adrian you can you can open it up and I agree with you they need to throw the ball down the field more to try to get Southern Miss off of them. but their defense is playing so well you don't want to turn the ball over have your quarterback throw it to Southern Miss and flip flop this field on you so uh, I think they'll be conservative uh, a little bit with Joy Matthews till he settles down shot of A.J. Suggs the freshman who uh, played in the first half. That pass played to uh, to Cedric Wilson good for the first down on play action under pressure and they're sacking for the first time tonight. Cedric Scott the senior from Gulfport is there to knock him down. Ron he was not highly recruited out of high school 6'3", 225 when he graduated 4940 now listen to him now 6'5", 280 runs a 458 he's another uh, player that Southern Miss kind of player Southern Miss gets and, and he develops into good football player into a football player with good coaching. By the way the defensive stats for Southern Miss in the first half Chapman with five tackles four solo and Barnes also with five tackles and one interception. See him creeping up on the outside now they come with the blitz the ball is complete at stalwart gets by one tackler and he's not going to get by Leo Barnes. I'll tell you he has been very quick and very sure tonight. He's played an outstanding game. Both these defenses they run so well screens like that they close quickly. By the way I believe Toby Champion is in the ball game replacing Munoz at the at right tackle. Toby a senior out of Humboldt Tennessee. One of two seniors actually that Munoz displaced and 
won the starting position. You got a lot of depth in that offensive line. A lot of young guys. Mike Berry, the yeah. offensive line coach, just talking, coaching him up. Lock at quarterback. You see him lined up tight at the line of scrimmage. Here comes Southern Miss, and they just like Mike said, they're going to say, prove to us you can throw the football. Otherwise, we're going to rush eight people, and it was Rod Davis that time. Yeah, he scored three touchdowns in the state playoff game against Joy Matthews' team, and what happens when you, you're you unsettled, oh, nobody feels comfortable. I think Eric Locke's got to start a series and let him go three plays and see what he does. Leverton waits for the snap at the 11. Tennessee continues to lead by four. Good high kick. Another great coverage kick. The football at the 29. Recovered. Oh, the officials trying to get to the bottom of that pile. 46 yards and a kick by Leverton at a loss of two. And you see Leverton down there patting his teammates on the head of the special teams, saying a nice job of coverage, guys. It is Tennessee football. Bartholomew, number 45, the junior fullback out of Nashville, is the man who made the recovery. Mills just doesn't bring the football in, slips out. That's why you know Bartholomew's on that special team because he tackles well, runs well. And he turns sideways to catch the ball. You always square up to the football. Because do. if it does go through your arms and it's right in front of you. Southern Miss defense has to respond here. From the 27, Matthews, screen pass to Henry. Blocker in front of him. Flip, and in fact, I'll tell you, I think he flipped over his own offensive lineman, Herrera. All safe plays for Tennessee. And the Golden Eagles have a player shaken up, and that is Chad Williams. He and Barnes have both been outstanding tonight. Herrera, the left tackle, he's going to get out in front of Travis Henry. It's a good block, and you're right. He, he was he was trying to hurdle him, and it shows how quickly Herrera got up, reacted, hit the ground, and came back up, and Travis had no place to go. Herrera sat out last year with the uh, as a partial qualifier. He's raring to go this year. Well, the Southern Mississippi de defense has really got to get their back up here. Wilson in motion. They run behind him, and it's Henry. And good pursuit. McGee, the first guy, along with Rod Davis, those linebackers running extremely well to push him out of bounds in a short game. And when you're this type of defense, the Southern Miss is a dominating defense. They've got to make something happen because same thing happened in Nebraska. They, they fumbled away opportunities. Offense put them in a bind. Now tonight, the special teams has put them in a bind, but they still have to come up big here and hold them to a field goal attempt. Yeah, last year in that game in Nebraska, one was a tip pass, it was intercepted. The other was a fumble that the, the Huskers picked up and returned for a touchdown. Martin in motion. Holds up inside, and it's a play action. They may be looking for him in a short route, and it is overthrown, and Martin was open for a time, and Matthews just did not get it cocked and get it to him. Well, they defended that well, though. Southern Miss was waiting for that play. Roy McGee again with pressure on Joy Matthews. As this play develops, pretty good coverage. Trying to get the ball on the flat. He was open for a second. There's the hit by McGee on uh, Joy Matthews. There's Eric Parker trying to get loose. Good coverage by Southern Miss. So it is going to be third down. And the line to make is the five and a half yard line. Eric Lock in. And roll him out. Going to put it right back in the middle. Hit at the line of scrimmage. And he's going to go for nothing. Houston was the first man. And then Delroy Stewart was right there to grab a hold of him. And you can, if you can read lips, he fill a former turn and said field goal. Let's try to go for the short thing. I'd like to see Tennessee bring Eric Locke out. One, play one, two, and three. And instead of coming in on third down, which is a tough situation to come down, come in on. And 
he's only attempted one pass. He's attempted to draw about three times. Alex Walls, who was eight of 11 in field goals last year, will attempt this one from 32 yards out. Leverton is his holder. Just inside that left hash. Good pass, and he got it. Split it right down the middle. So we'll take a break. 10-20 remaining third quarter in our new score. Tennessee 10, Southern Mississippi 3. Tennessee 10, Southern Mississippi 3 with that field goal. 10 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Bill Fulmer knows that two weeks from tonight, Florida Gators are going to be in here. They can't be thinking about that, obviously, with only a seven-point lead and just over 10 to play. As you look at Walls, the deep man for the Golden Eagles. And they pack a defense, too. <laughs> oh, boy. Good kick. He has been sensational tonight. Everything he's been called on to do, he has done it extremely well. And let's check in with Brian Kenny. Brian? Ron, we have a Sports Center in game update for you. Of course, we lost Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech to Lightning. Right now, Kentucky and Louisville being delayed by Lightning. They're going to still try to get it in, but for the safety of the players, they'll try to wait it out. Before that happened, though, Dave Ragone to Arnold Jackson here for Louisville. Made it a little closer, 19-14 to 14 right now. We'll keep you up to date. Again, delayed by Lightning, the Governor's Cup. Well, thanks for him. Of course, we lost the one last Sunday night to Lightning, and now this one tonight. Really unusual. Crowd coming to life. First down as Kelly goes under center. And he'll go straight ahead, and this is Nix. Derek Nix, the junior from Atala, Alabama. And he brought that roar to an end quickly. That's a gain of very close to 10 yards. Well, college football next Saturday afternoon at ESPN2. NC State with their new head coach, Chuck Amato, faces Antoine Randall L. and the Indiana Hoosiers at noon. And Quincy Carter leads the 11th ranked Georgia against Lou Holtz and the South Carolina Gamecocks. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. Knicks now six carries, 25 yards. Audible at the line of scrimmage. Knicks hit behind the line of scrimmage this time. And it's going to be Henderson and also Anthony Sessions filling the hole quickly. Anthony Sessions, a junior college All-American. He was an option quarterback in high school. John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, likes to blitz him. He loves to blitz off the corner. John uh -huh. Chavis upstairs. You've got to be very pleased with the way his guys have played. Third down. They're going to take it to the 30. Nick. Hit in the backfield, and is Westmoreland made the initial contact and then posted him for his teammates. Interesting thing in talking with Westmoreland, he gives all the credit in the world to Al Wilson. He was his mentor, and he said he taught him how to study, how to read, and also how to communicate with his fellow defenders. He's, he's quite a compliment to him. Yeah, he's getting good play with his defensive line, though, because nobody can get to the linebackers. They have their hands full with the defensive line. Home and again. This is a wobbly line drive gathered at the 33 by Parker. in Southern Mississippi Territory. They're wearing them down in special teams. 40 on the kick, 23 on the return. We'll be right back with more from Knoxville. It is a Tennessee seven-point lead. Tennessee River with uh, the Vol Navy down the way, just downstream. And as you come and look up into the stadium, 100, and we haven't gotten an official attendance, I don't believe yet. Here we do, 108,064. 
and betters the attendance record of the 98 game against Florida 107 653 so 108 and 64 tonight big drive here for Southern Miss defense because Philip Fulmer knows if he tacks on three more points then he forces Jeff Bauer to come out of and, and play a little bit more on offense and then the turnovers will ring up great point Travis Henry the man at the top of the eye short drop gets it out to Wilson Cedric Wilson and doing what he does best after he catches the football and that is totally more yardage Keon Moore was there defensively Joey Matthews threw that ball well to Cedric Wilson I'm sure Cedric Wilson's uh, on that sideline saying I need that football the one thing that he did say at our meeting with him on Thursday afternoon is that when he converses with Joy in practice, he just will clap his hands and say, quick, 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 don't throw to me late. Get it to me there early so I can do something with it afterwards. Yeah, he, want, he doesn't want to get clotheslined. 8 of 13, 55 yards, one touchdown. That one to Cedric Wilson and one interception. That one picked off by Leo Barnes and a return of 33 yards. That was back in the first quarter. Well, our good friend down on the sidelines, Adrian Carson, has done a little bit of everything in covering college football through the years. Uh, you now can go online right now and actually recommend reports for Adrian to cover during the game. He's had some great ideas already pouring in this week. One of the ideas could be yours. So to learn more, just log on to ESPN.com and type in keyword Ask Adrian. A couple of things I'd like to ask him. Go ahead. <laughs> type him in. Standing by. No, type guys. <laughs> he can't do this question, Gottfried. Adrian, you know he can't type, so he's going to have to ask you. <laughs> Wilson now three catches, 25 yards. Pressure. Going to be sacked for the second time. Nope, got it away, and there was no whistle, and Travis Henry fell down. Tight end, John Finlinson was wide open, Ron. And Joy Matthews didn't see him. John Nix gets the sack. I mean, he is going to be wide open right here. Let's see if we can see it. Look at here. Right here. There's nobody behind him. He's got to load the ball right now. But he just couldn't get it away. John Nix makes the tackle. Big play by Southern Miss. So keep him out of that field goal range. So it's third down. And they need to take it just inside the 35-yard line to pick up the first down. Clock runs. We're now with seven minutes to play third quarter. But after hurry, didn't get the playoff. And a five-yard penalty will be assessed against the Volunteers unless they got a timeout called, and they did not. Adrian Karsten, early in this ball game, when we were talking to him off the air, he said the plays were coming in a little late to Joy Matthews, and they got caught on that one. Anytime you have a new quarterback, though, it's a, it's a, uh, and a job. New, and a new snapper. And a new snapper. <laughs> because Fred Weary was a defensive tackle, then went to left guard last year. Now they've moved him to center. Martin in motion. Got a man tucked away at the 10-yard line. Good coverage. Moore with the coverage. Eric Parker, the intended receiver. Adrian, let's check with you again. Yeah, tenth time by my count, Ron. That the play has come into Joey Matthews, young and fresh and green as he is. You cannot give a quarterback this fresh less than ten seconds on the clock to make his own decision. It, 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 he's he's been put in that situation a couple of times tonight. Probably more times than he should have. Been. I tell you, it's tough, Adrian. No, getting those play calls in there, especially when you're playing against a good defense. Leverton, pooch kick, and look at this. Laid it up soft. They're going to touch it dead inside the final pay. It. If we had 620 left in the ball game, Leverton would be my vote for oh, he, MVP. He's my vote too. Bartholomew again on All special American. teams. He has a tackle and an assist and now a touch to make the ball go dead. Position by Southern Mississippi tonight. They are taking this one inside the 10. This is the furthest that they have had to start in the ball game. Again, it's Leverton who nailed him deep. You see Nick's coming up. That's right there. The, the student section and the band right behind him. And he gets the ball and he's hit immediately by Sessions. 
Anthony Sessions has been spectacular. Let's go to Adrian. Ron, this is the effect of Neyland Stadium. In the student end zone, which I am standing in right now, there is no way that the quarterback can talk to his offensive line, no matter what type of huddle they form. I gotta tell you right now, the tight end, the offensive tackles, the guards have no idea what the play is. Second down in the end zone, Kelly better hurry. He sat for a safety roll over street. Leverton's not taking credit, but he should. No, <laughs> David Leverton's the reason Tennessee's ahead in this football game in a very good defensive front and linebackers in secondary. How about BYU coming back and winning over Virginia? Yeah, I guess Virginia had a fourth and one at midfield and went for it and then didn't make it. BYU went right down the field. And here's Will Overstreet who's beat the block of the left tackle. And there is nowhere for Jeff Kelly to run and hide. Will Overstreet plays with his motor running all the time. We'll kick off your Thursday night at ESPN with college football tonight, 7.30 Eastern. Then, number 10, Virginia Tech travels to East Carolina to face the Pirates. Lightning prevented us from seeing Michael Vick last week, and we're looking forward to seeing his electrifying moves on Thursday in prime time. Southern Miss has to come back. I, I'm wrong with that. If the way the offensive line's being dominated, they don't have time. To, to, when they get behind the chains, they're in trouble. And this can roll downhill fast for them here. Seven sacks by Tennessee. Overstreet still pretty excited over there on the far sideline. Hallman will kick it away. Parker is the deep man. Foot a bit. Cedric Wilson. Wilson ran into his own man, but still makes it just about to midfield. And now Southern Mississippi has got to be very careful because all of a sudden this dam could break. Oh, it could. And then your defense is going back on the field. AJ Sucks will come in to run this offensive series. A.J. hit two out of three in his first time out. Martin in motion straight ahead. Travis Henry breaks one tackle. Bites off another. He's going to wind up with another four yards. And that's the reason the fans absolutely love him here. Senior leadership and just really a quiet worker that just wants to be good for this team. Ron, he thought about transfer. He went home and talked to his mom. Uh, they sat down. They prayed about it. He, she told him to stay here. He's from Frostproof, Florida. That's where Alvin Harper uh, first came here from, and that started that chain from uh, Frostproof athletes coming up here to Tennessee. Bartholomew, the fullback, and the offset eye. And it's Henry again, this time to the left, and he is pursued and hit quickly by Mumford. Gerald, a senior from Jackson, Mississippi, 6'3", 255. Travis Henry's nickname is Cheese, they said, because he runs like a block of cheese. He's hard to bring down. A lot of people compare him at Tennessee with Emmett Smith. Of course, a lot of people are comparing people with Emmett Smith all over the country. <laughs> As a low center of gravity, though, it is very hard to knock off his feet. We saw that back in the first half in that sequence that he had. Big down for Southern Miss here. Third down and three. They got to take it just inside the 42-yard line. Play action. Suggs on the run. Oh, he got it. Good heavens. Troy Fleming was there. Put it in the wrong spot. Hit him in the mitts. A.J. Suggs had it right there, and he had the first down. It's David Leverton time. I'm going to try to influence all those voters that are going to call in there or type in to Adrian. 
<laughs> Number 43 is the man. I don't think you need to lobby for him. Look at this. Six punch, almost 45 yards, his longest 58, and three inside the 20. Best punter in the country. And the spiral's not going to turn over. Mills fumbles the ball. Recovered by Mills. 33 yards and a kick and nothing on a return. Sunday night NFL season premiere kicks off tomorrow night at 8.30 Eastern. Tennessee takes on Buffalo. And at ABC's Monday Night Football, the past two Super Bowl champions collide as Denver will take on the St. Louis Rams. ESPN and ABC, your home for prime time NFL football. We saw Eddie George on that uh, breakaway there. Derek Nix. Is a any George fan, he'd like to get more involved in this offense. Dwayne Woods comes in a tailback. Now again, Southern has to endure that student section of the band right behind it. Two seconds on the play clock, got it off. Kelly. And Jeff is going to take it, I believe, to the first down mark. It was uh, Jackson who pushed him out of bounds. He's going to have nightmares of orange tonight because he's been chased this entire football game. As soon as the national anthem was over, he was on the run. Offensive line has not given him a lot of protection. Short of the first down, but at least they had a big positive on first down. 13 hurries, five knockdowns, and seven sacks of Kelly tonight. One of those for a safety. Pass tipped at the line of scrimmage, intended for Leroy Handy. And it was Marsh, Stephen Marsh, the sophomore from Wingate, North Carolina, who got a hand on it. Tennessee lost a lot of defensive players to the draft, and I believe this defense tonight, of course, they're, uh, they're not being tested like they will be, but uh, they're flying around. They get great speed, and uh, this is an excellent defense. Gardner, number 10, his roommate, Kelly's roommate, just kicked into the lineup. Let's see if he goes to the tight end. Middle screen, and the ball is dropped. Sean Mills. Boy, dropped a punt a moment ago and now drops a pass that he should have had. Can't put together three good plays against this defense. And Tennessee keeps putting pressure on him with the uh, good field position. Allman has been a busy guy tonight. on this one. Caught, fumbled, and recovered at the 43-yard line by Parker. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Ron, how long have you and I have been working together? 1990? Yeah. The first time I ran with Ralphie the Buffalo in Boulder, Colorado. I remember uh, well. I you pulled the F-16, mm -hmm. and then I uh, made barbecue on that big thing at Ohio State to help the co-eds move in. I guess from Ralphie to Buffalo to Smokey, here at in Tennessee, there are not a whole lot of animals I've missed in college football. A couple things about ESPN.com Ask Adrian. Anything goes, <laughs> you're about to see why. Wait a minute, Adrian, not anything. We get to vote on that, too. Okay. <laughs> Stallworth in motion to the top of your screen. As such, throws the ball incomplete off the mark. Stallworth, the intended receiver, and Raymond Walls was as close as anyone to the football. Is Adrian trying to be like Karnak? Karnak? No, he was a he was a magician. No, he was the uh, he was the guy Johnny Carson, wasn't it? Johnny Carson. Oh, oh no, that Karnak. Yeah, the great Karnak. Adrian's trying to be like him. Doesn't have his envelope. You forgot yet. about Johnny Carson. No, but there was another guy by the name of Karnak as well, Mike. He was like a. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Gives it straight ahead. Ball is fumbled, and it came right back to Travis Henry. Travis lost the football, coughed it up, and it got knocked right back to him. It was Gill who came up and put the leather on him. Myron Gill, number 27, with a good hit. Look at that ball bounce right back to Rolled him. Rolled right over Only Gill's back. Only way he could have got that back. Gill was hurt. 
They need to get him out. Yep, he is hobbling around, and in fact, now the youngster can't get off the field and is either grabbing his knee or his calf. I hope that's only a cramp. Barron is a senior out of Baton Rouge. And that's what it would appear it was. You know who's been quiet tonight? Dante Stallworth. Yeah. The speed merchant, number four. He split way out here. He's been quiet tonight. Three catches for 11 yards. And happy to report they're working on Gill, and it was a crimp. Sucks, drills it, has it complete, breaks the tackle. There's Stallworth. He's quiet no more. 51 yards. now has blown this thing open with a safety and also a touchdown. This one 51 yards. A.J. Suggs gets his first touchdown pass at Tennessee. Just a missed tackle by Raymond Walls. Too much speed by Dante Stallworth. And this is an example of getting a pass on time to a receiver and allowing, allowing him to do something with it afterwards. Broke the tackle and goes 51 for the score. Well, you got to credit the defense of Tennessee because they have allowed Southern Miss any offense. David Leverton, been a field position guy, that's what you want. And then all of a sudden, you know, you break it open with your speed on the outside. Dante Stallworth has so much speed, very, very tough to defend him on the outside. Dam is broken. And it could have broken. You could be right. Walls is the deep man as Leverton prepares to kick it off. Another guy across the 40 and out to the 45 yard line. Well, they'll start with their best field position. Well, it's time for you, the viewers, to go online and help us select tonight's player of the game. Here's the list of nominees Leo Barnes, Leo Handy, Travis Henry, David Leverton, Dominic Stevenson, and Dante Stallworth. Log into ESPN.com now and cast your vote. It will announce the winner late in the fourth quarter. I made my pick right there. That's an unofficial vote you saw on the screen here. From the shotgun. Blitz is on. Kelly. Boy, that was a nice throw right between the two defenders. I'm not so sure that it was not tipped just a bit by Golden, just enough to misdirect it, and Handy couldn't hold on. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Kelly threw it right in there. Uh, Leroy Handy, I think he's got to make that catch. Conference USA came into this ball game today and came into this football season there expecting a lot of good things out of Southern Miss East Carolina East Carolina beat Duke today Tulane was close with Ole Miss for a while but then they lost that ball game Louisville's hand tough with Kentucky Kelly 7 of 12 and 73 yards he's missed the last four pressure is on he's going to be shot again and that is eight sacks and again, it's Will Overstreet. He made the tackle for the safety just a few moments ago. Hard to call plays when you're getting dominated in, in the interior. And that's what's happening to Jeff Bauer tonight. There's no answer because you're just outmanned. 
with that defensive front. Third down, we'll call it 15. You can see total yardage in this ball game. They're going to take it to the Tennessee 45. Kelly under pressure, and he is going to be hit. It will not be a sack, but he was running for his life again. His overstreet will be credited with the tackle, and Will has had a truly outstanding third quarter. Overstreet is just getting off the ball, Ron. If that ball is snapped. He's beaten the tackle around the corner. Coleman, this is the eighth punt for him. Very high. This is a good kick. Last couple have been in, but we're in. This is a spiral that is taken in at the 13. Breaks a couple of tackles, and Parker will take it out across the 25 to the 28. And Brian Kenny, let's check with you again. Ron, the nation's longest losing streak is over at 21. South Carolina, New Mexico State. Langston Moore forces the fumble on New Mexico State. Andre Offing picks it up. He runs it in. South Carolina beats New Mexico State 31 to nothing. Lou Holtz, one full season later, gets his first win at South Carolina. Ron? Watch that goal post. 31 to nothing, South Carolina. So good for those kids. That's a tough thing to go that long and, and not win a ball game. Travis Henry, the tailback again. 54 seconds left in this third quarter. Boy, he did get tagged. That's John Nix. Nix is listed as the number two right defensive tackle. Mike, he has been impressive tonight. He made some big plays. 6'3", 290. He's got good speed. Tennessee's offensive line, Mike Berry, is going to take a look at this tape. And Michael Munoz, I'm not sure whether something happened to him or not because see, he's been Champion. replaced by Toby Champion. He hasn't been back in, I don't believe. Mark in motion and leave him inside the block, and then Henry will take it on a move across the 30 as you look at uh, Munoz. Mumford making the stop for the Golden Eagles. His dad's here tonight. Saw him out before the ball game. He's a great lineman for USC and the Bengals. That is the end of the third quarter. And as they head for the final 15 here at Neyland Stadium, they are standing and applauding because they enjoyed the third quarter much more than they did the first half. Let's take a break. It is Tennessee 19 and Southern Mississippi 3. Nineteen to three as we start the fourth quarter. Also, as uh, the offense takes the situation at hand here, looking at the Southern Mississippi defense, volunteers on the defensive side of the ball tonight have played nine defensive linemen. Third Hilton, down and six. Hilton and depth. What you got to do two weeks from tonight? You're going to need depth when Florida comes in here. Up, rolls the pocket, gets the pass away, and almost had it picked off. And now a late flag comes in. Lineman downfield, yeah. Ron. Yep. Anthony Herrera, number 75. I was going to say, A.J. Suggs hasn't played that badly. Uh, hit the touchdown pass to Dante Stallworth. A uh, little late, but it's a tough throw when a right-hand quarterback's coming running to the left side. this penalty down. Adrian, let's check in with you. Ron, Michael was the first uh, freshman to start here on Munoz, the offensive yeah. line. Michael, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, since Bill Mayo back in 1979, he had a lot of trouble with pass blocking and run blocking in the first half. Probably a little bit disappointed, but he understands he's really only 19 years old and very fresh, very young. A lot of potential, however. He'll be an All-American someday here. Leverton's kick, wobbly spiral, fair catch is called for and is made at the 17 by Danny Fowler. And he had some room there. Well, next Saturday we'll have a primetime doubleheader for you over on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern. Mike Adrian and I will be down at Oxford, Mississippi as Auburn takes on number 17, Ole Miss. Then Kirk Kettner leads Illinois out west to take on San Diego State. And for more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. Get to see Auburn's uh, new running back, Rudy. And get to see the deuce. 
That ought to be a fun game with the return of Tommy Tuberville yes. to Oxford. A little noise there. Makes it to Derek Nix. Rolls the pocket and Kelly zings it completely. It's handy. In Tennessee with a player down. Andre Lott made the tackle. Gain of 16. We cannot get a number, so uh, I believe it's Andre Lott, isn't it? I think Phil Fulmer is uh, no. 42. You know what? That's that's a uh, West uh, Westmoreland. Yeah, it looked like West he got Moreland. hit by his own man. Got hit by Overstreet. We had to. Yeah, we got had the opportunity. Here it is right there. They collide and Overstreet <laughs> knocked down his own guy. Well, while we have some time, we'll take a commercial. 1438 left in the ballgame, and it's Tennessee leading by 16. <laughs> 19 to 3 our score. You can see the medical staff and the trainers checking over Westmoreland. We thought that possibly it had his uh, bell rung, but it looked as though they were reaching underneath that shoulder pad to his left shoulder. We'll get a report. First and ten, and this is Nix, and he's loose. First time tonight that they've really broken him, sprung him across the middle, lot on the tackle, but it's going to be a gain of about 14. Adrian, you got an injury report. Yeah, it's a Westmoreland run, not very serious at all. Took a helmet right in the stomach. Now, the injury is not as serious as the fact that he is out of the game. Remember, as I said before kickoff, the only man on this defense who played back in 1998 on the national championship team, he knows where the defense is supposed to be, and the linebackers, and the defensive backs are playing without some leadership right now. First down at gain of 14, longest of the evening for Knicks, and this time it is handy. Handy on the reception, and he will take it for still another first down. It's going to be a gain of 12. Ron John Chavis, because Southern Miss is having so much problem inside, he covers all three of the interior linemen that's having the toughest time. Make sure that they can't get doubled up that you're seeing on those blocks. Not much here for Knicks. Good move by John Chavis. He's finding a advantage that he has in making sure that they can't get any help for those offensive linemen. Big John Henderson on the stop there. Knicks, by the way, now 38 yards on 11 carries. And Westmoreland, as you can see, up and moving around, and he's about to strap on that headgear. The head coach came out to take a look. He knew oh, what he, number was he, down he, on the field. Get out there for those good ones. Kelly sacked for the ninth time. Sessions. Eddie Moore was in there replacing Westmoreland, and he gets a half a sack. Well, that shows you the depth of Tennessee's defense because you lose Eric Westmoreland, and the backup Eddie Moore comes in a six foot, 210 pound sophomore, and he makes a play. So now they said, to Eric, step back, Eric. Let Eddie play a little bit more. Well, here comes Eric back into the ball game. Moore goes out. Good round of applause for him. And 16. Kelly got him, turns around at his mills, and he will have the first down. You give Jeff Kelly some time, and he's an accurate passer. 21 touchdown passes last year, 11 interceptions, but only threw two in Conference USA play. Got better as the year went on. Shows you how big that safety was. As a base score right here, it'd be a one touchdown game. That is their first third down conversion of the night. Kelly rolls the pocket, throws on the run, has 
it complete. That's Fowler. Danny Fowler, Jr. from Hueytown, Alabama. Jeff Bauer trying to move Jeff Kelly around so that he's not, not always dropping behind the center. Rolling him out to his right side, right-handed quarterback, good throw. That lines up. This is out to Mix. Turns to corner and loses his head here. No, that's a Tennessee head here that came off. And it is Jabari Greer who lost his head here. See how good a hands Derek Nix has coming out of the backfield. Caught that as soft as you possibly can. Got turned up field right away. He's another one that has such great athletic ability and speed. You better make sure your pursuit angle on him is correct. And that's the reason he was able to turn the corner. And a very durable back. Tennessee going to take the time out. So this is a first down at 17. A win really kicking up here at the stadium. We'll take a timeout. 19 to 3 Tennessee in the fourth quarter. Southern Mississippi is threatening. Welcome back to Knoxville, Tennessee. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Parston. Great to have you along tonight. And a little surprise there that some folks are headed to the house with 11.45 showing on the clock. They feel it's very certain. good about their defense. <laughs> they certainly must. It is first down for the Golden Eagles. This is their deepest offensive penetration of the night. Pressure up the middle. Quick pass. It is tipped and caught. And they will score. That's Bobby Gardner. Formerly a, a quarterback, moved to tight end. The great hands caught the deflection. And Ron, they have to go for two right here. Down 19 to nine. You got to go for two. Try to get within a touchdown and a two-point play. Of getting back in this football game. Jeff Kelly under pressure again, trying to hit the uh, wide receiver over the middle. Ball goes right to Bobby Garner. Okay, well, that was a real obstacle course. First of all, the umpire had to duck to make sure it didn't hit him in the head. Then it is tipped by a defender in the right to Garner. Somebody needs to let those fans know that they're leaving, but uh, there was a touchdown in score. Oh, there are speakers out there. I'm sure they heard it. Two-point conversion attempt. They put it on the left hash mark. Kelly has time, throws it. It is complete to handy, but was he in the end zone? No. Just shy of the end zone, so the two-point conversion try is no good. And Jeff Bowers upset that Leroy Handy didn't get a little the route. deeper yeah. in the end zone. No, he's a he's mad at the official. He thinks maybe he did break the plane. Jeff Kelly waits a long time to find his open receiver. It's in. Ooh. He's in. He's right. He's got his an feet are standing in the end zone when he caught the football. And the football's uh, broke broke the plane too. He's right. Give him two. But they're not going to get the two. No, there is feet and the ball that does break the plane right there. Well, Southern Miss is used to playing on the road. They're, they've got the mentality of the road warrior that you got to be better than the crowd, better than, better than the other team, better than the officials, because they, they are on the road a bunch. Well, after our game, it's college football tonight's scoreboard. Then enjoy Trey Wingo and John Anderson for Sports Center at 11 Eastern. College football nail biters and upsets, and a baseball wild, wild, wild card races. An NFL Week One preview. All of that. Sports Center coming up at 11 Eastern. Leonard Scott is the deep man. Grant Hanna prepares to kick it off. Scott from the four. Crosses the 20. We'll take it out to the 22 yard line. I think all of a sudden now this becomes an important series oh, for this, Tennessee. There, I was just thinking as I look at the clock, 11:29 to go. This there's a lot of time in this football game. A couple turnovers here or there, and uh, I guarantee you, Philip Fulmer's not thinking about this game over right now. He knows he's got a 10 point lead, but he's playing against pretty good defense. And AJ Suggs has settled into the quarterback position. Joey Matthews 
who started tonight's ball game on the sidelines and watching right now. It'll be Travis time. That's exactly right, and Travis. Check it. It's Travis Stevens. It is Travis time, regardless of which. Travis Stevens this Stevens. time, the junior from Clarksville, and he will weave his way for a couple. It was interesting uh, watching Philip Bomer yesterday around the offices. He he had his 50th birthday, and he wanted to be cordial and and appreciate all the nice gestures and the signs and cakes and everything that everybody had. But he also wanted desperately to concentrate on this football game, and it was kind of hard at times. So you see number 20, Travis Henry, checks back into the lineup. Stays in as a blocker. Suggs rolls the pocket, drills the pass, tipped away. Oh, my goodness, very dangerous. That's Walls who came up to make the defensive play. Stallworth, the intended receiver. By the way, yesterday when they came over for the uh, walkthrough, uh, here's a shot of uh, one of the smoky mascots. Giving a basket to the head coach, and uh, the cheerleaders are out to sing. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Mr. Kainel. It's a good thing that uh, that Leverton can can punt for a living and not sing for a living. Philip Palmer's well liked by his team. Southern Mississippi jumping around on defense. They give it inside to Travis Henry. He is caught, now breaks away from the tackle, breaks another and through. I'll tell you, what an unbelievable effort. Barnes finally stops him. Stewart had a hold of him for a loss. 18 yards he winds up with. Well, we talked about David Leverton being the player of the game. I still feel that way, but Travis Henry's had a pretty good evening himself. He's carried this offensive football team. That's a big first down right there for Tennessee. Keeps that clock moving. He's trapped in the backfield. They've got him right here. They got him, and now he's going to break outside. Breaks a tackle there. Just bad arm tackle late in the game by Byron Gill. What well, Stewart was engaged and Delroy was trying to get rid of the blocker and also grab his jersey at the same time and he was the first man that he went through and then 18 yards later Tennessee moves the chains right up the middle another opening and Henry will take it right to the tee at the 50 yard line. You know all the great offense they've had here. Well, as the player of the game voting continues on ESPN.com, uh, here's an update. Right now, uh, David Leverton. I guess this is kind of like Washington in politics. Uh, when you have heavy lobby, uh, Leverton way in front. Final results later on in the ball game. Henry now, 18 carries, 126 yards. Picks up the first down, takes it down to the 45-yard line. Davis and Houston combining on the stop. And the biggest thing about this right here, they're moving the chains, but also all of a sudden clock. that clock now goes on fast forward. Ron, you remember the Arkansas game when Clint Sterner fumbled the football, but Travis Henry still, Tennessee's offense had to get it in to win the game. He had runs of 15, 15, 11, 1, 1 for the touchdown. And he really led him to the national championship uh, and will become the all-time leading rusher if he has any kind of season like he's starting out to here tonight. Travis Stevens will take it to him. Dante Stallworth on the reverse. And Stallworth with a good second effort. Driving walls right down the field. That's good for 12 yards. Good play call by Randy Sanders because you keep punching the ball up inside, then you run the reverse with Stallworth. And these Southern Mississippi kids are tired. You could tell by the reaction of those two defensive backs as they got up after making the tackle. Had De Quincey Scott had contained there, but he was trying to chase down Travis Henry, and all of a sudden Dante Stallworth comes around wide.
clock is down to four, down to three. They get it away, pitches it back, hit behind the line of scrimmage is Stevens. And uh, Brutley, who had Brutley, who had just come into the ball game, is the man who makes the tackle replacing Walls, will knock him down for a loss. It's a good play from the outside. Brutley came from the right side, beat the block of the fullback and the wing back to make that hit. Yeah, in fact, he got that shoulder pad inside the blocking angle of the thing that there was not much he could do. A.J. Suggs has continued to play the quarterback position, so I think we can reasonably say going into practice, he's going to be the number one quarterback next week. In the practice, of course, Casey Cross is going to come back. Locke is in the shotgun, takes the snap, runs into his own blocker, now breaks it to the outside, and he's going to be knocked down. He lost the ball momentarily. He gets back on it at the 47. Cedric Scott again, number 96 with a big play. You can hear the chorus of boos. I was looking yeah. to see if maybe there was a player's name started with the. No, that was the no. reaction of the crowd. Eric Locke has uh, run. Tried unsuccessfully to run this draw tonight. And uh, he just not has had any place to run. They've been playing run on him all night. So third down and 25. They're going to take it down to the 22 and a half yard line to convert. And you can throw the ball down the field here with your field position. Pressure from the outside. They set up the screen. Travis Henry has one block and then a nice double team in the secondary. Leo Barnes with another big play tonight. They did a good job with the clock. That's what you can uh, say about A.J. Suggs and the offense on that series. Ran a lot, about five minutes off that clock. Let's see what Leverton does this time. You can see his numbers on eight punts. Five, he has dropped inside the 20. He has a breeze semi to his back this time. Maybe a little bit harder with the pooch kick to get it to settle and uh, go take dead. a delay. Hits it to one, takes a Tennessee bounce, goes out of bounds inside the five. 38 yards in the kick, and that may have done it <laughs> as far as his candidacy for oh, MVP he's... tonight. Let's take a break. 552 left in the ball game. 10 point Tennessee lead. 19 to 9, Tennessee on top, less than six minutes to play in this opening contest for, for both teams. Southern Mississippi. I believe, I'll double check the numbers, I think this is six times that they have been punted inside the 10 yard line tonight. Running play this time by Nix, there's just nothing there. Because they know what they're coming with. Sessions in Westmoreland team up on the tackle again. Tennessee quarterbacks, Ron, uh, you see how Matthew Suggs and Locke have done. Casey Clawson didn't play tonight, but you got to narrow down to two of them because they got to practice. You can only practice two. You can't practice four. And that's going to be the big decision of the staff and Philip Fulmer on Sunday. Got the pass. Well, Handy drops it. Teddy Gaines. Teddy Gaines came up and put the lumber on him. Yeah, he punched it out. This defense uh, tonight has uh, really impressed me with their team speed. Nine sacks, five different players, Overstreet with three sacks and also a safety. They have spread the wealth. second on the play clock. Kelly drills the ball, has it complete at the 20, and here goes Fowler. And Danny Fowler would take it out across the 35 and out to the 38-yard line. That play is good for 29. You give Kelly time, and he'll find the open receiver. There was, that was well blocked by the offensive line. 
blocked. See, everything is blocked at the line of scrimmage. So Jeff Kelly now has a chance to find Fowler on the crossing route, and then he picks up valuable yardage after the catch. Play clock running. Game clock under five minutes. Swings it out in the fat. And look at Nick. Boy, you were right, Mike. He catches the ball so nicely on the run and then does something with it afterwards. Gaines is called on again to make a tackle. After next year, the pros are going to like Derek Nix because he can catch the football. He's a durable back. Doesn't get hurt. He'll run up in there 20, 25 times for you. He's uh, a big kid, too. He is a big guy with great hands. He's got the hands of a receiver. 6'2", 226 pounds. You look at the numbers on Kelly. 15 to 21, 190 yards and a touchdown. That one for Bobby Turner is tied in. Quick pass out. Oh, what a hit. Whit Mills is knocked down quickly as Miles came up and just as he caught the ball, he didn't see him coming in. Bubble screen, and Willie Miles saw the bubble. He was trying to break the bubble. He sees the bubble screen start right here and uh, just didn't wait for anybody to block him. Made the tackle on Sean Mills. About to hit 3.30 left in the ball game. 10-point Tennessee lead. Sessions coming on the blitz. They get it outside to Nix, and this time Tennessee is there waiting. Nice job as Mills and Gaines combine on the stop. He will be denied the first down. And Willie Miles was right there again. It's almost like he's in the huddle and knows the play call. So now it's fourth down. And if they want to stay in this football game, they've got to take it to their own 48-yard line. Sidelines left and open field to the right, as you can see. Not very good on third down tonight. Middle screen, gets a block, turns it up, and he'll have it. Southern Mississippi is still alive. That's Kenneth Johnson, a freshman out of Gramercy, Louisiana. Picks up 10 yards in the play, and that's a gutsy call. Johnson really looks like he has uh, speed after the catch. You got to get the ball down the field over here. Now the clock becomes a factor because you, you're behind by two scores. You got to throw deeper. And that's something he has not had no. a luxury no, or has. time to do tonight. Been sacked nine times in this ball game. Grills Evans, who was tied in, that's Garner. But he did not get out of bounds, so it's a short gain. The clock will continue to run. We hit 2.09 and now 2.08. Taking a lot of time here. Here comes the blitz from the outside. They pick it up. Kelly's pass locks it in just a little too far, intended for Handy. And Leroy could not be quite that speedy getting over there. Ron, we talked about Derek Nix. He, he runs the ball, he's durable, he catches the ball great. He knows when the blitz is coming from the outside. He picks up the blitzer on the outside here. He's a good blocker, so he's an all round back. Stopped at 144. Jeff Kelly, the junior out of Deer Park, Alabama. Here comes the blitz in the middle. Steps up, drills the ball. Ball is tipped and almost intercepted by Miles. Things would be a little tighter here if they would have got that two-point conversion. Yeah. It looked like he was in the end zone, so that would have made him down by eight and be able to tie with this score if they do score and go for two points. So that was a big call. Defensive team waving their arms, asking the crowd to get into this one. 
Fourth down again. They need to take the ball to the 38 and a half yard line. Kelly this time from the shotgun. Drills it, has it complete, and they'll convert another fourth down situation. Leroy Handy. Run the ham, three timeouts left. Clock is their enemy at 132. That was Moreland shaking up again. The training staff is out there with him, so he'll have to leave the field. And that means that to Eddie Moore, I would assume, unless they bring in an extra defensive back. It is going to be Eddie Moore who will check in at linebacker. Clock is running. 125, now 124. 11th play of the drive. Kelly over the middle, drag route, had him open. And it's Nix as it got him out of the backfield. And there, the clock is stopped with 110 to play. Lott made the tackle, but it is a first down at the 19-yard line. And Southern Mississippi uses one of their three timeouts. So we'll take it with them. 70 seconds left in the ball game. They're down by 10, but they are driving. in Southern Mississippi driving the ball at the 19 and a half yard line and a worried Phil Fulmer across the way 10 point lead pretty good situation with 70 seconds left but still yeah, he's fortunate that uh, two point conversion wasn't uh, wasn't called good wasn't given to him so here we go the ball on the left hash mark three wide receivers to the bottom of the screen out to the right Tennessee creeping up. They come with the blitz. It's everything. Kelly breaks. He's going to run at the 15, at the 10, and it's going to be belted out of bounds at the 7. That will stop the clock at 103. It's a gain of 12. Ron, such a difference if, if they'd have given them the two-point conversion. Jeff Bauer was complaining about. Here's the play. Leroy Handy gets the ball from Jeff Kelly for the two-point conversion, and it looks like when he caught the football, he broke the plane. Now, he ended up back across the line of scrimmage, but they didn't give him those two points. First down and goal. The ball seven yards away. Kelly under heavy pressure, gets away, throws the pass, touchdown Southern Mississippi, and it is Mills. Well, we're getting ready for an onside kick here. And that, again, I just don't want to beat a dead horse, but that two-point conversion was big. Gigantic right now, yeah. 55 seconds left. Hainsworth was just all over. Gonna Jeff kick, Kelly. Going to kick the extra point to go within the field goal. Boy, I'll tell you, under duress, that was a great job by Jeff Kelly. Hannah with the extra point attempt. Knocks it home. And we have a three-point ball game with 55 ticks on the clock. And Mike is exactly right. We'll take a break and then come back and look at an onside kick right after this. One minute to play and the good hands team for Tennessee has come out they will drop one man to around the 30 yard line and that's Leonard Scott but let's see as Hannah lines up on this near hash mark is up and here comes the onside kick it is touched and on the ground recovered by Tennessee Bobby Graham got on the football
Phil Fulmer's club can run 55 seconds off the clock and they will record victory number one in this 2000 season. He's saying the clock didn't the clock move. Did, yeah. You know what the official probably saying? It's, it's, uh, is it a home clock operator? <laughs> it's your problem. <laughs> it's your problem. Yeah, get that guy to grease, grease up his finger there. Southern's going to have to use their timeouts to try to strip the ball. Travis Stevens tackled after a gain of one and able to use that second timeout. Well, the voting is complete. Tonight's Visa Player of the Game is selected by the fans at home with the tad of coercion from the booth. ESPN.com is David Leverton. 43 yards he averaged on his punch tonight and dropped six inside the 20. He received 54 and a half percent of the votes on ESPN.com. So Voters are smart. <laughs> You know, also, we need to give kudos to, to that entire defense of Tennessee and also to Travis Henry, who uh, has 135 yards and 19 carries, an average of just over seven yards per carry. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, portions of a game ball that you could pass around in that locker room tonight. Well, both these teams are going to have issues to deal with when they go back to the tapes tomorrow. Tennessee's uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Southern Miss the same way. Well, I will say this. The offensive line, Southern Miss, played a lot better in the fourth quarter. Boy, blitz pickup and everything. They were just, they were much, much sharper. And it showed what a difference because we had talked about the whole game. It really wasn't fun. It was not fair to blame Kelly because, boy, when he had time, he really got it done. In the fourth quarter, he hit 15 of 18 for 159 yards and two touchdowns. So when you give uh, Jeff Kelly some time, he gets you some results. Stevens holding on for dear life. This was a big weekend for Conference USA. They needed uh, to to win some games. Of course, East Carolina did win. Uh, I'm sure Mike Slive, the commissioner, keeping a close eye on uh, these big games that they were playing. Ron, he's done a good job. He's got four bowls now: Liberty Bowl, GMAC, Mobile, Alabama Bowl, the Motor City Bowl, and the Houston Bowl, and four bowls for that conference this year. So Southern Miss. Uh, will be one of those teams going to one of those sites. I'm sure East Carolina's uh, a loaded football team that Virginia Tech's going to see on Thursday night. Well, here's a reminder. Next Saturday, we'll have a primetime doubleheader over on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern. Mike, Adrian, and I will be in Oxford, Mississippi as Auburn takes on Ole Miss. And then it will be Illinois out west to meet San Diego State. For more, log on ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. UCLA, UCLA really looked good. They did. Bob Toledo, congratulations to him. Well, the amazing thing about that is they lose their starting yeah. quarterback in the opening series, and the backup comes in and looks absolutely spot on. I mean, he was, he you know, was Rod very good. Rodney Gilmore predicted they were going to score 40 points, and he almost got there. So Rodney Gilmore sitting somewhere with a big grin on his face about the Pac-10. Deshaun Foster also is uh, is a very He's special. He's more important than Rodney Gilmore. <laughs> yeah. He, he did it. He is a really special runner. They'll go down on one knee. No timeouts left for Southern Mississippi. And 37 seconds, 36. And now for the volunteers, Bill Fulmer and his staff, well, they got a lot of little issues, one major issue to work out. But they also got a major problem coming in in two weeks, and that's yeah. the Florida Gators. They have to get their quarterback situation down to two players. Now, Joy Matthews did some good things tonight. Eric Locke never really threw the ball one time. A.J. Suggs probably had the better of it. Casey Clawson sitting out there, and uh, he's a very, very good quarterback. That. So they have a week off, but they've got to solve that problem. Jeff Bauer, his team's going to win a lot of football games. 
A lot to be proud of tonight. Tennessee ran the clock all the way down. Did not want to absorb the penalty. Five seconds left up there. They'll take that last time out. And let's check in uh, one final time with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? God, with five seconds left, the payoff on ESPN.com. <laughs> Ask Adrian. Those couple hours of this game had about two, three hundred hits on the website. For example, Michael Pierce from Cleveland, Tennessee, would like me to uh, do push-ups with cheerleaders on live TV. Someone else would like to not, uh, not gonna happen. Smoky. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> However, there are other things. The point is, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, while we got a couple of seconds, I want to say hi to your son, Sean, who's a very brave young man I know watching tonight. Uh, Alpha Gamma Road, we're in charge of doing the dirty work to make sure that Smokey is clean. But since Scott Kelly from Charlotte, North Carolina, logged on and asked Adrian to give Smokey a bath, well, let's figure out to make sure that he's clean behind the ears. Gentlemen, the rinse cycle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Adrian. Leverton with the kick end over in and it's returnable from the five yard line and the tackle is going to be made at the 15 yard line Moore is downfield to make the stop and Tennessee will get the win in this opening game.